Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 109 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about loading user controls dynamically. Generally, we drag and drop user controls on the web form at design time. However, there could be several reasons in reality for loading user controls dynamically. For example, depending on the logged in user preferences like age, gender, location, etc., we may want to load different user controls. And along the same lines, based on admin or non admin users or the role they belong to, we may want to load different user controls. Let's see how to do that. So within this web application project, we have this calendar user control that we have been working with in the in the previous sessions of this video series. If you have if you haven't watched them, I'd strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. So let's see how to load this user control dynamically. Okay, to load the user control dynamically, there's a method called load control method which we can make use of. And if you look at what this method expects, it expects the path of the control that we want to load. We want to load this calendar user control which is present in this user controls folder. So let me copy the name of the control and then the calendar user control is present in the user controls folder which is present in the root directory so i use the till symbol to indicate the root directory of the web application project and within that we have this user controls folder and within that we have this calendar user control.acx that's what i want to load and then look at the return type of this load control it's actually returning a control back and that makes sense because this load control method can be used to load any type of control. Okay, so now once we get the control back, you know, once this method loads the control, what we want to do, we want to add that to this page. And to do that, I'm going to use this page dot controls collection property to the controls add. And what do we want? Look at this, it expects a control. And this method is returning a control back, so it gets added now. Okay, now if I run this application as it stands right now, it's going to throw a runtime exception and we'll see how to solve that runtime exception in just a bit. Look at this, it says control txt date of type text box must be placed inside a form tag with run it is equal to server. Now look at what's happening. What's basically happening is if you look at this calendar user control, it has a text box inside that which is an ASP.NET server control and its ID is txt date. So it's trying to add this calendar user control and within that calendar user control, the first control is the text box. And look at that, this, this control of type text box must be placed inside a form tag with run at is equal to server. What does that mean? So when this control is now being added to this web form, okay, so this web form for do, web form 4.aspx, now any ASP.NET server side control that must be placed inside this form tag which has got this attribute run it is equal to server. Now for some reason what happens is when this you know page.controls.add method is used, you know, it tries to add the control to the web form outside of this form tag. And that's the reason why we get this runtime error. Okay? And to solve that we can use either a panel control or a placeholder control that we have. Now it's also helpful to use these controls because in reality on this web form you might have other other things like maybe you're asking the person to enter their name, age, gender, etc. and then maybe you're um, selecting their date of birth. So you'll have other fields here and after that you want this calendar user, user control to select their date of birth. So if you want to specify okay at this specific location I want to load this uh, uh, user control dynamically then you use a placeholder control there and then to the placeholder control you add that user control. Okay, so it's going to solve the runtime exception that we have just got and it is also going to tell us where exactly we want uh, the user control to be laid, loaded. Okay, so let me drag and drop the placeholder control from the toolbox. So that's the placeholder control that we want. And all I want to do right now is instead of saying page.controls.add, I'm going to say placeholder1. That's the ID of the placeholder control. So to that, add this user control. Okay, so now let me go ahead and run this and look at what's going to happen. It, it will add the control to the web form. Look at that. I have the user control loaded dynamically. So all you need to do is one line of code to add the user control dynamically. And look at this. I'm able to select the date. Okay, everything is fine. Now let me turn tracing on to this web form because if you notice, we haven't assigned an ID to that user control. 
okay when we drag and drop it at design time on the web form you know we get an id for that user control calendar a uh, user control one or something like that but then since we are generating this control dynamically let's see what is the id that's automatically generated for that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn tracing on so that we can see the control tree so i'm going to set tracing is equal to true now let's go ahead and run this page and then when the web form loads up, we should see the entire control tree collection and we should see our user control there. Look at that. Inside, you know, this is the web form and inside web form we have a placeholder one control and within placeholder one control, look at the ID that is giving it saying CTL02. That's the ID which is given to my calendar user control. And let's say it doesn't make any sense to me. I want to assign my own ID. Can I do that? Absolutely. We can do that as well. So let me go ahead and change. You know, before I add this control, I'm going to take that. And then maybe we can create a control object reference. Or because we are expecting a calendar user control, I'm going to specify you know a variable of type calendar user control so I'm gonna call this calendar user control CUC is equal to load the control but then here we get a type conversion error so I'm going to type cast that to calendar user control because we are loading this calendar user control we know that it's a calendar user control so I'm doing the type casting and then what will we do we will assign an ID for this object so calendar user control dot ID is equal to let's call this calendar user control one CU one for example okay now I want to add this calendar user control to this placeholder now let's go ahead and run this and see the tracing and it should have given the ID that we have assigned okay so the meaningful ID CU one CU one okay now Let's do one thing. Um, let's say I want to retrieve the value and print that or maybe on the click of a button, you know, whatever date that you have selected within that calendar user control. OK, so let's first go ahead, drag and drop a button control onto the web form. So I have an HTML break there and let me drag and drop a button control onto the web form. And whenever I click this button control, what do I want to do? whenever the user selects a uh, you know date from the calendar user control I want to retrieve that date from the calendar user control now when I select the date and click this button I want to retrieve that value and print that on the web form in reality maybe we'll retrieve that and then send it back to the database you know maybe to a stored procedure to save it in the database and let me first turn this tra tracing off because it's a little annoying there so let me set that to false and now we want to do that we want to retrieve the value from that calendar user control now if we had this calendar user control on the web form at design time it's very pr pretty easy all you do is it will have an ID maybe calendar user control one dot selected date property is going to return us the selected date within that user control but then now at design time on this web form we don't have that calendar user control that's going to be generated at runtime in the page load event okay so I want to programmatically retrieve the value from that calendar user control so how do I do that now if you look at this on this web form I have this placeholder control and to the placeholder control we are actually adding this calendar user control so within the placeholder control whose ID is one, a placeholder one find a control and what is the ID that we are expecting CU1 so find a control with ID CU1 okay and look at this find control method again this method is going to return a control back but what are we expecting back we are expecting a calendar user control back so I'm going to typecast that to be of type calendar user control and then all we need to do is we know that calendar user control has got selected date property we want to retrieve that selected date property which is of type string and print that on the web form so response dot write whatever date we are retrieving out of the calendar I mean that the user has selected we are retrieving that and printing it okay so let me go ahead and run this and we should be able to select the date print it on the web form and we click that button so I have this 15th of January selected I click this button look at that and look at this you know the the control is retaining its its value on post pack as well I click the button I'm able to retain the value on post pack as well because this is a dynamically loaded control and that too I'm loading that within the page load event okay 
Now, most of the internet article states that for the dynamically created controls to maintain their view state across post back, you know, the control should be loaded in page initialization event of the web form. But however, we have just seen uh, that we have loaded this user control dynamically in the page load, but I'm still able to retain its state across post back. And you have just seen that. Look at that. I have selected that value. I click this button and it's still retaining its value. Okay, now we know that this user control also supports um, events. If you also want to wire up programmatically the events of this control, you know, you can do that as well before actually adding the control. Okay, so if you remember from the previous sessions of this video series, this user control supports, you know, date selected event, so CUC. So let's say I want to fire up, you know, associated an event handler to this event. How do we do that? We use plus equals and we are going to generate that event handler and let's say whenever a date is selected I want to print that date out so response.write so we have that E selected date and we want to convert that to a short date string I am able to do that there okay and similarly if I want to wire up maybe a uh, calendar visibility changed event, again, that's a custom event that we have created in the previous session. How do we do that? CUC dot, what is the name of the event? Calendar visibility changed plus equals, and that's going to generate another event handler method. And let's go ahead and hook that up as well. So protected. Okay. So I want to print a message here saying response.write um, calendar visible is equal to, if it's visible, you know, maybe it prints true, otherwise it will print false. Okay, so we have the events also associated with this calendar user control. So let's go ahead and run this. And look at this. As soon as I change the visibility of the calendar, you see that the visibility is true, visibility is false. And as soon as I select a date, that date is also printed. And if you want this output in separate lines, uh, properly formatted, just append an HTML break. But in reality, what we will actually do, we'll actually retrieve those values and send it to a stored procedure, maybe to save it in the database or to a printer to print them. Okay, so now oh, we should have actually done that here. I selected the date, look at that, date and whether the calendar is visible or not. So in this session, we have seen um, um, how to load dynamically the user controls and how to preserve their state. I mean, the, the, their state is also preserved across post back. Okay. Um, in the next video session, we'll discuss about loading the standard ASP.NET controls dynamically. In fact, we'll discuss about adding these controls in a post back event. You know, maybe we'll discuss about a simple real time example because there a lot of people has asked me if I add control dynamically on the click of a button, then how do I retain its state and how do I make it properly uh, visible upon a post back. We are, we are going to discuss about that in the next video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.